stop on the right stretch, you catch your five, you know, two pounder. And, uh, you know, in the first couple of hours. Right. God, man, they're up there, son, they're there. Missed that one. This is gonna be the deal. Look at that, ain't that amazing? Ain't it amazing? And fish are there just like they were before. They're just a nice keeper. Bass fishing is not luck. It takes skill to catch a bass, and you're going to see the best 40 bass anglers in the world show you how. For this is a Bass Masters Classic. Masters Classic, the World Championship of Professional Bass Angling, returns to North Carolina. For three days, the center of the bass fishing world will be High Rock Lake, a 15,000-acre impoundment on the Yadkin River. This is the big show, a milestone in bassin history, the silver anniversary, the 25th annual Bass Masters Classic, a time to celebrate a moment to reflect, and a flashback to the history-making 1994 classic here at the Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. The time of the dream, Brian Kershaw's angling achievement, a dream comes true. the first BASS Federation qualifier, the first amateur in history to win the Classic. And at the youthful age of 23, such promise, such a future. Tragically, five months later, Brian died in a plane crash near Raleigh, North Carolina, a loss that shook the bass fishing world. But if not for fate, Brian Kershaw would be defending his Classic Championship this week. Sorrowfully, he will not have that chance. But thanks to his dramatic victory and the storybook career, Brian Kershaw will always remain a living legend in the annals of bass fishing. He is sorely missed. To his memory, we dedicate this 25th anniversary Bassmasters Classic Special. The Bassmasters will continue in a moment from High Rock Lake, North Carolina. Legendary reputations don't happen overnight, and genuine integrity is hard-earned. Inside every ranger is a vision Forrest Wood began more than a quarter century ago, a vision of total dedication to quality, where craftsmanship and a passion for excellence continually set the standards, a vision so powerful that today, building legends isn't just a goal, it's what we do. Wrangler jeans. Available in the two colors boys prefer most. Black and blue. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Pine Lake. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real comfortable jeans. Hey, your boat's drifting away. Hey, that ain't no problem. I got it trained. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> Just kidding. That's MotorGuide's new laser, the world's first wireless remote control trolling motor. No wires or control cables means you can operate it by hand or by foot from anywhere in the boat. MotorGuide's laser, the world's only wireless trolling motor. See your MotorGuide dealer today. I gotta get one of them. Practice day, Classic 95. One day, eight hours to fine tune a winning game plan. Our Bassmasters cameras are riding with two pre-classic favorites. David Fritz of nearby Lexington, North Carolina, the odds on choice. He grew up fishing High Rock Lake. There's never been a Bass Angler of the Year and Classic Champion in the same season. 
Mark Davis of Mount Ida, Arkansas, wears the 1995 Angler of the Year crown. He paid a price. You might not recognize Big Mark. He's lost over 150 pounds, a weight loss program he credits with improving his fishing stamina. His fishing style is be versatile. Mark's not known for any one technique, but uses at least 10 different methods. This morning, it's topwater, looking for an early shallow water bite. Eating a pop How about that? First boat dock with a pop on. You're not just smiling Come a little bit. Yeah, right? man, this could be the deal. Why ain't this tournament day? Huh? It's, look, look at this. Look, look, look at that. It, 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 with this morning's overcast, Mark Davis's topwater pattern is holding true. His game plan, at least on this practice day, is working. And working alongside the Bassmasters hey, TV back. crews to explain the fish catching That's patterns will be our special pro commentator. We picked this year once again a great friend of mine, Tommy Martin, a world champion in the past and a fellow that I've known that probably knows more about fishing and the language of fishing than anybody else. So we'll have him to give us an idea, first of all, of who he thinks might have a chance, the best chance perhaps, in this particular tournament. Tommy, what's the chances of our buddies uh, that we know are gonna, that should do well? Well, Ray, it's gonna be tough, but you know, the lake conditions are different this year. Last year, when we were here at High Rock Lake, the uh, shallow water bite was really on. The lake had risen about three or four feet, and the conditions were perfect for flipping and pitching. Uh, Tommy Biffle was second, Denny Brower finished third, and of course, Brian Kirsch will end up winning the tournament flipping. But this year, we're playing on a different ball field. Things have changed. The, the, the water level is down about a foot from last year. The water is a lot clearer. It makes the lake more favorable to offshore structure fishermen, not to say they're gonna prevail in this tournament, but it makes it more favorable to them. David Fritz is the obvious front runner. He's the guy to beat. If we were in Las Vegas placing bets, shoot, everybody would be betting on David. He knows the bottom of this lake like the back of his hand, so I look for David Fritz to be very, very strong. The main river system, which the, the Yakin River, is actually muddy from all the way to the dam, but the thing is, and, it, and it's misleading, is that the mud is underneath. In other words, the clear water out on the lake um, is, is warmer, and that cold water that's running in, that's muddy, is cooler, so it settles to the bottom and the clear comes to the top, and it makes a little line there, and, and you, you just don't realize, you don't know how well the fish are gonna see your bait down there, and that's the only thing that I'm really concerned about right now. Mark Davis also knows water clarity will be a key to his success. Uh, that's what we want. Well, it told me that uh, there are some fish deep on these, uh, on these uh, isolated brush piles and log jams out here in 12, 15 foot of water. You know, even though the water is colored, I think the fish will suspend up in the tops of them. You know, when you get away from the shore, you get out into that deeper water and those varying depths and structural, we call them structural features of the lake, where the fish often are, and more often than not, that deep diving bait is what you usually use. One such guy that's chosen to do a, something a little bit different, and it may be the magic, and he's got an enormous confidence in it, and that's Mickey Bruce. All the local fishermen, they, they fish offshore in the right kind of places, the right kind of way. You've got to do something just a little bit different in, in those places. The, the schools of fish are there, they're kind of roaming around. The bait fish is plentiful, and the fish are very fat and healthy, and, and basically I'm going to fish uh, two lures. I'm going to use a crankbait and a jig. I think uh, these fish see a lot of a lot of crankbaits, but like like any other type of fishing, you've got to do something just a little bit different with that bait in order to trigger the strike. What separates the the guys that win from the guys that just do well is the mental aspect of it, in my opinion. You know, you've got to be mentally prepared to face a lot of uh, variables that you don't have any control over. Rick Clun is one fisherman that seems to be able to mentally block all of these things out of his mind and just totally get in if you you might call it a trance mm -hmm. uh, he just gets in a trance and and he has total concentration and he he mentally all day long keeps that positive attitude that he's sooner or later gonna find that key concentration of fish that he needs to win the classic and Rick isn't the only one there are other fishermen that are able to do this too but Rick is just one of the guys that I sing aloud at being absolutely good at it. He's also won four classics to prove he's pretty good at it. His approach to fishing the classic would have to say is probably the best there is. And you just keep that positive mental attitude and you never give up. That's one of the reasons I'm sure that you're so successful. 
Well, I, I think it's important that you pace yourself correctly. I think too many times we all would love to catch a limit the first hour, the first cast even. <laughs> uh, but uh, when that doesn't happen, and, and then you've already set yourself up to, for some real negative you know, situations. So I really try to pace myself. The most important part of the, any given tournament is the last two hours. That's when you're more apt to break down mentally and physically and, and get this, this, you know, just, uh, just frustrated and all that. So I think more, most tournaments are lost that last two hours and by far the first part of the tournament. There you have it, folks. Pick your favorite. This is a 25th Classic. Winning the Classic could change your life. I guess I started as a, as a kid with a dream of being a professional bass fisherman. And when I won the Classic in 79, I guess that was when it was for sure a reality that I had become a professional bass fisherman. Uh, I remember the pressures that I was under during that tournament, but I didn't have any idea what it was gonna do for me, or I've been under a whole lot more pressure than I was. But I won the one in 79, and then I came back and won the one in 89. So I'm gonna skip a few years and come back and try to do it again in 99. Stay tuned. We're gonna have a heck of a tournament. The Bass Masters will be right back. From the very beginning, people are learning that when car trouble has you feeling a little wobbly, you should hurry into your neighborhood Parts Plus auto parts store. At Parts Plus, we believe in treating you like family. And we believe in supporting strong family organizations like the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. So the next time you need auto parts, count on the pros at Parts Plus. We're America's family of auto parts stores. We're New Blend? Yeah, New Blend. That stuff in the sweats that keeps it from getting those pesky little fuzzballs all over it. That makes these poly cotton sweats different from anything else out there. That you'll only find here. And here, and here, and here. It's New Blend, get it? You should buy now. Jerseys with New Blend. It isn't monofilament. It isn't a braid. It's like nothing you've ever fished before. Fireline, new from Berkeley. Witness the dawn of a new age in angling. A fishing line faster, thinner, more powerful than anything of this earth. Berkeley Fireline, the future of fishing is here. Most of all, I want to have a good time. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we ask you to look after us and accept our thanks for this great and beautiful morning and for 25 years of wonderful fun. Forgive us our sins, look after us throughout this day. Let us have a great day of fishing and get home safe and sound in your name. Amen. All right, first man out, Charles Grigsby. Forest Wood, they're off for the beginning of the 25th anniversary Bassmaster Classic Tournament. And right now, there are a million butterflies flying in the bellies of those fishermen who are on their way racing to that first spot they found during the, uh, that one day of practice they were allowed. And we are going to switch now to uh, one of our five television crews that are covering this tournament. And our friend Tommy Martin, who was a 1974 Bassmaster Classic champion, will be our commentator. So let's switch now to David Fritz and Tommy Martin out on the lake. The water is still receding, the water is clearing up, and in fact the lake is in real good shape, but I think there's going to be some disappointed anglers because a lot of the bank fish, in my opinion, are going to uh, move away from the bank since the lake is falling. We're watching David Fritz, the first rattle out of the box, and David is fishing offshore structure as everyone would expect him to be fishing. First hookup. Oh, he's big and too. David just hooked that fish on a, on a 400 pose uh, crankbait, fishing a little eight or 10 foot ridge out there, making very long cast. And yeah, he boy, he made repeatedly cast to that area. I mean, he must have thrown in there 15 or 20 times to get that bass to strike. And he's playing him very carefully, as David usually does. I'm sure he'll circle the boat with him a number of times. Oh man, I had barely done that thing. He's using that big soft seven foot rod and taking his time. He's got him. It's not as big as he thought it was, but it's a good solid, looks like a good solid three pound bass. 
Boy, that's a great way to open up the, the first morning of the Classic. Got a three pounder, and it's not even seven o'clock yet. There's another one. Another fish. David's into a school. He's hooked another that's fish. Boy, the old 400 pose is working for David this morning, and when, when he gets that bait to working, he can be tough. It's a good fish. He's got him. That's another one. Mark Davis is making some adjustments in his game plan. The extra boat traffic we've got, we've got this morning has made the bank up, and I've catched him on a pop off. Now that it's changed, I'm, I'm going to make a change here and, and try to adjust. Before the water got muddy, I was catching him just right off the bat. I was in the first flight. As more and more boat traffic come by, the fish, they, they got off the top water. We're going to throw a Strike King spinner bait and see if that'll get us. Fishing offshore structure is Mickey Bruce's tournament strategy, but the key is doing something different, popping a jig up off the cover, as he explains. If you'll notice, I made 15 or 20 casts in the same area there with a crankbait without a strike. And I turned right around and cast a jig in there. And I don't know where this, uh, the presentation or... Uh, I've got this thing really loaded up with a lot of rattlers in it, and it offers offers a bait to the fish that stays in the strike zone longer. And I think that's the key to what I'm doing. Rick Clun's approach is to go for a quick limit of 14-inch keeper fish working the Abbott's Creek shoreline. Feeding fish, white bass, can be a tip-off. Where there's bait fish activity, Mickey Bruce hopes there's a bigger largemouth trying to find an easy meal. may not go quite yet. As expected, the home folks are rooting for David Fritz, and he's going strong. Yeah, get the gossip again. He's bigger than I thought he was. Boy, he's finding a little hot spot here. David continues to throw the pose 400, and he's connected with the third bass out of this particular spot. He's got him. That's a good fish. David Pritz has just landed his fourth bass of the morning, and golly, it's only eight minutes after eight. He's having a super start for the 1995 Bassmasters Classic. I know David has to be pleased. The Fritz fleet is out in force. As many as 75 boats are shadowing his every move. Bass fishing as a spectator sport? Hey, <laughs> what's the attraction? Pick up pointer, see where they go. <laughs> we were out here last year in the rain. Just about as many people following David as there are today. We'll just watch them and learn, and then after they get through with the tournament, then we'll come back and try it. He ain't that big, but he's a good keeper. Another fish. David has another fish on. David's walking him around the boat real slowly. He's gonna belly lift him. There he is. That's the limit. It's 8:14, and David Fritz has already got his limit in the opening morning, the Bassmasters Classic. So he's got to be a happy fisherman now. David predicted his best bite is gonna be somewhere after nine o'clock. So he's got the whole day to look forward to things, and obviously uh, uh, he, he's gonna look for those kicker fish. He's gonna try to catch some bigger fish later in the day, and he thinks there's a good concentration of fish here, and. He's trying to make the decision that all tournament, tournament anglers are faced with. Do I stay here and try to cull and catch a few bigger fish, or do I get away from this spot and save it for the remaining two days? I feel like he's going to make the decision to leave this spot because these fish are not particularly large, and he's going to leave it since he does have a limit and go looking for those kicker fish. Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> well, good luck, Dave. The Bassmasters will be right back from the 25th Annual Bassmasters Classic World Championship. So, Hank, here you are in this nice little fishing hole, champion bass fisherman, famous TV star. How'd you get where you are today? Was it all that practice or just raw talent? Come on. <laughs> no, really, Hank, how did you get where you are today? You really want to know? I got you on my Kelly Safari. Kelly Safari Tires. It's how you get there. Upon visual inspection, all fish hooks look sharp. 
However, under extreme magnification, things get real ugly real fast. But the beauty of the Daiichi fish hook shines through. Many professional bass anglers use Daiichis in their jigs and worm fishing. Made of high carbon steel and tempered to perfection, Daiichi hooks are indeed the world's sharpest. Oh, beautiful, for spacious sky, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain. Tradition USA, made in America, by the people, for the people. David Fritz has caught all five fish this morning on a Pose 400 crankbait. That's his favorite plug, the, the plug that he's uh, become famous for fishing. And he's using a uh, special color that he believes is really giving him a lot of advantage. The water is a little bit dark down underneath, and David's keen on seven foot to 10 foot depths. He's using a pearl sided bait with a green back that has an orange belly. Now, most of these spots that David's fishing are, are offshore, way offshore spots, uh, and, and he's using a medium uh, retrieve that he pauses every so often. Every so often during that retrieve, he'll pause and actually stop reeling, especially when he hits a stump or he hits a shale rock or he hits any type of cover on the bottom. He momentarily pauses and stops, and when that crankbait stops, that's when he's been connected with a lot of his strikes. The key lure presentation, something a bit different. That's Mickey Bruce's strategy, too. If, you, if you'll notice how Mickey Bruce is working his jig, it may seem pretty unusual to a lot of fishermen because I guess a lot of fishermen think he's jerking a spoon, maybe, but he's ripping that jig up off the bottom and letting it fall back to bottom very quickly. And it's exciting, these bass, and, and he's, that's, that's the only way he can get them to bite the jig is just jerk it up off bottom and let it fall back to the bottom. Mickey has a fish on. That looked like it could be an awful good fish. Boy, this, this is a good fish. He just hooked it on a jig. Boy, he's moving, moving the fish on out, trying to get it away from the cover. That's a good bass. Boy, Mickey needs this fish bad. That is a good fish. That fish will approach four pounds. Oh, he's just barely hooked. Golly, he's got him. There you go. Boy, what a catch. I'll tell you what, that's what it's all about. Mickey Bruce is fishing real vertical banks. You can see the type of banks he's fishing here. Um, they're real steep type banks where the water comes out at two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten foot and just breaks off real abruptly into 18, 20, 25 feet of water. And there's some cover along these breaks and Mickey has located a school of bass that's holding somewhere between seven and 12 feet. That's where these fish are holding. Mickey's got another fish on. Fish hit it on the fall. Then got to look at this. Oh, it's a good fish. Boy, he can probably cull with that one. A year ago, dock fishing dominated the classic and proved to be Brian Kershaw's winning pattern. Dion Hibden this first day is catching fish, flipping the docks along the main lake, but for the most part, the shallow water bite is off the mark. In the day one standings, offshore anglers have the upper hand. Georgia's Mickey Bruce, fishing his ninth classic, is atop the leaderboard with 17 pounds, 14 ounces. Classic rookie Mark Harden, a Lake Lanier, Georgia fishing guide, ranks second with 17 pounds, 6 ounces. Followed by 1992 Angler of the Year Kevin Van Dam with 17 pounds, 1 ounce. And another classic first-timer, David Ashcraft of Arkansas, has 16 pounds, one ounce. Two-time classic contender Mike Worm of Arkansas is fifth with 14 pounds, six ounces. Pre-tournament favorite David Fritz with 13 pounds, nine ounces, ranks sixth, followed by 1995 Angler of the Year Mark Davis with 13 pounds, eight ounces, over four pounds behind the leader. Rookie Mark Harden flipped a jig to catch his first classic keeper. That was around, I'd say, 8.30, and it was probably 11.30 before I had my limit. I got one little area that I caught the rest of my fish off of the spinnerbait, and uh, uh, I caught four fish off of this one area. 
and they were my four better fish. I feel like it's an area where these fish are filtering to, and hopefully they'll replenish yourself. Kevin Van Dam weighed in his 17 pounds with just four fish. I got, you know, some quality bites. I, I know where there's some quality fish at. I, I made that decision before the tournament to fish just for big ones. David Ashcraft is on a strong big bass bite. This pattern that I fished today, that I caught the fish on, I found over here in pre-fish. And uh, uh, I know not much of the competition is doing it, if any, and uh, I, it's a bait that I love to throw, and, and I really feel good about it. I, I really feel like I can bust a big string if everything goes right. You know, if I work my head right, I think I can catch a big string of fish sometime in the next two days. Storms move, top water lure. Big bass are hitting and it's got the whole world shook up. Bass love it. It all starts with a little bitty twitch in a turn. And it'll do it all. It's a spit and pop and twitch and walk and thing to call the chug bug. For a special chug bug limited offer, call 1 800 4 chug bug. Quality lures for taking the big ones by storm. They sink and they swim, they rattle and wriggle. They dive and they jive to drive fish crazy. Revolutionary new soft body power bait lures from Berkeley with replaceable action tails of pure scent and flavor enhanced power bait for more strikes, repeated strikes. And when fish bite, they just won't let go. Berkeley power bait lures, hard nose crankbait with a soft spot for big fish. I swear, son, one of these days you're going to turn into a fish. Your mother and I have been talking, son. We feel you're spending entirely too much time fishing. Fishing is fine as far as it goes, honey, but what are you going to do for a living? Tournament after tournament, these pros stake their careers on Team Daiwa fishing tackle, the most reliable tackle ever made. Team Daiwa, for those who were born to fish. The 25th Annual Bassmasters Classic World Championship will continue from High Rock Lake, North Carolina. You know, in 1983, I won the Bassmasters Classic on the Ohio River at Cincinnati, and I can still look back and think about that time when I was waiting to go into the scales, and I wasn't sure whether or not I had the tournament won, and I got up there and I saw what my fish weighed, and I mean, it was just the most exciting thing in bass fishing. Day two, the 95 Classic, High Rock Lake, North Carolina, the pressure cooker of bass fishing. Win the Bassmasters Classic, and fame and fortune go hand in hand. Just maybe you'll parlay it into a million dollars. Tournament leader Mickey Bruce has qualified nine times. He's won three BASS tournaments. Mickey's used to pressure. But what about rookie Mark Harden? His BASS career numbers just seven tournaments. Mark Harden, who was in second place after the first day of competition, is fishing nearly all the way in the back of Second Creek. He's fishing way out offshore. He's fishing a, a couple of small ditches that run out off the bank, and those ditches have four-foot humps on the edge of them, and there's some wood cover and some rock cover along the, the humps on the edge of these ditches, and he's using a, a big half-ounce spinnerbait with a nickel inside blade and a gold outside blade and a chartreuse and white skirt, and he's fishing that spinnerbait very, very slow, slow rolling it across this uh, wood cover that's underneath the water, and his tracks are coming in about four feet of water. What I'm using here is a Georgia Blade spinnerbait with a Zoom Fat Albert grub. Uh, I feel that the, the grub is the, the real key to it with the curly tail in these muddy waters. Uh, the water's pretty dingy back here. The curly tail seems to uh, enhance the action of the bait a lot more, so I, I think that that little wiggle back there with the curly tail puts more vibration out into the water. Hopefully, I, I believe it, you know, it makes me get a few more strikes than if I was using a straight tail bait. Yesterday's leader, Mickey Bruce, is struggling. He's fished his key spot and has come up empty. David Fritz started today over four pounds behind. He needs a big bite. Offshore, crankbait fishing is working for Kevin Van Dam. Huh. 
Mickey Bruce has finally caught a fish. He has struggled all morning to get this fifth fish. If he can get this one in the boat and it's a keeper. He's still using the Stanley jig, fishing the, this deep, deep water drop off. Oh, that's a pretty good keeper. Mark Harden continues to slow roll his big bladed spinner bait along the bottom in Second Creek. He's bumping the rocks or stumps to trigger a strike. Kevin Van Dam is making a bid for the lead. This is the one right here. Oh, baby, stay on there. That is a toad. However, don't count Mickey Bruce out. He's still getting bites out of the school of bass holding on the deep water point at the mouth of Abbott's Creek. But for now, the day two tournament lead belongs to 34-year-old Mark Harden. He weighs in today's big bag, 18 pounds, 10 ounces, for a two-day score of 36 pounds. In second place, Michigan's Kevin Van Dam with 35 pounds, 9 ounces, trails by only 8 ounces. Mark Davis jumps from 7th to 3rd on the strength of his 18-pound-plus creel. The Bassmasters will be right back from the 25th Annual Bassmasters Classic World yeah. Championship. You know, I, I'm either going to hero or zero on it tomorrow. Weather, the one variable, the one thing bass anglers can't control. The final round, day three, and overcast. Cloud cover may decide the 1995 Bassmasters Classic World Championship. With low light conditions, the offshore deep water bite may be tougher. Tournament leader Mark Harden has a short 10 minute run to his fishing spot in the back end of Second Creek. He may find conditions have changed. Normally on Saturday, the gates at the dam are closed. With the lack of current and movement of bait fish, the High Rock Lake bass are not active or eager to feed, as first round leader Mickey Bruce knows. On the weekend and the, the lake backs up, that, that repositions the fish. They, they become less active and I, I see the day to be a little bit tougher. Sure do. But the clouds hang in this third morning while Mark Harden keeps slow rolling his spinnerbait, still looking for his first bite. Kevin Van Dam is back on his big bass hole. This one looks like something he'll want to stick in his live well. Professional bass fishing, a game of adjustments. Make the right move, be at the right place at the right time. The difference between winning and losing. Mark Davis has switched game plans. He's abandoned his early topwater strategy. There's so much boat traffic running up and down the lake, and I'm catching those fish right on the shoreline. It muddies that water up, and they won't bite. So I decided today I was going to start deep and, and just stay deep all day and, and try to catch a, you know, a big string. I'm, gonna, I'm going for broke. I'm slow rolling a Strike King spinner bait. I'm just fishing brush piles, isolated brush piles on these points up and down a little creek channel here. There's just a small channel just, just beyond where we're sitting here. And there's a small little channel that comes out of this, this little creek here. The main channel of the creek is out, out to my right out here. And I've got another area out there where they come together, the, the junction there of, of these two creeks, and it's, it's a good place also. I thought I might get in here and, and catch a good one early, you know, I might not. I thought it's still my best shot, but I think the sun's going to help. It's about 7.40 on the third morning of the Classic, and Mark Harden has yet to catch a fish. He's fished his very best spot real thoroughly for about an hour and 40 minutes, and no fish so far. There you go. I feel like these fish, what they're doing is they're, uh, they're using this point. They're working, working their way around and around on it. And what I'm doing, I'll fish the spinner bait if I find a good heavy piece of cover like a brush pile. I think these fish just kind of roam and move all over the flat. And if they're not, you know, if they're not right on the brush, I pick my crankbait up. 
I start looking for. That's what we want. There must be a bunch of them there. I had a bat. About 10 cranks later, he got it. There's probably several of them there. Bait I'm catching these fish on is, is what is a, it's a new bomber lure. It's called a fat free shad, which is a kind of an appropriate name for me to be uh, fishing with uh, with a lure with all the weight I've lost. But it's it's a great crankbait. It runs so deep. It's such a good running bait. I'm throwing on 20 pound test line, so you can imagine the the possibilities of, of, of depth you can get with this lure. I'm throwing in the chartreuse blue back. You can see it has a holographic finish. It's just a beautiful lure. Fat free shed. David Fritz is catching bass, but it's the wrong kind, a white bass. <laughs> Mike Worm in sixth place is fishing oh, a spinnerbait. Oh, oh. oh. That's good fish there, guys. This bass should give Kevin Van Dam the tournament lead. Big mistake. What I did there was uh, I found, when I found this little bunch of fish, the fish I caught earlier on the crankbait, after 20 casts more or so with the crankbait without a strike, I went over to the, to the big heavy Strike King spinnerbait. What I was doing, I'm just reeling it through there and letting it bump any, uh, any cover I can feel along that ledge. When I bump the cover, I kind of speed my retrieve and then let it flutter. And when that thing flutters and those blades turn slow after it comes off the cover, that's that's what you gotta do to, to trigger a strike. What well, strong fish right there. I haven't seen him yet. Not like the last one. Thank you, Lord. Mark Davis is fishing in Flat Swamp Creek, and this creek is really no different than many of the other creeks on High Rock Reservoir, with the exception that it's noted to hold larger bass. Even David Fritz says that if you can catch the bass out of Flat Swamp Creek, you have a great chance of winning the tournament because they always run larger. He's fishing out over a creek channel in 12 to 15 foot of water, and these fish are suspended. They're not on the bottom. Something Mark Davis is doing that's different also a lot of anglers in the classic are using eight and 10 pound test line to try to get their crankbaits to actually dredge the bottom or, or bump the bottom at all times. Uh, Mark is using 20 pound test silver thread line in order to keep his crankbait. He wants it to actually not run so deep because Ooh. these fish are suspended about six Thank to eight feet Lord. off the bottom. And he's actually trying to fish for these suspended fish and using that heavier line to keep that crankbait up off the bottom. And he's doing a great job. Flipping boat docks is Kevin Van Dam's backup pattern and it's paying off. Mickey Bruce is working a sandy shoal and drop off, his backup spot in Crane Creek. And Mike Worm is looking for another five bass limit. He's a threat to move up in the standings. Yesterday's leader, Mark Harden, is back in Second Creek. It's all I can do. I, I ain't got nowhere else that, that I can go to to have confidence in catching a fish. And, and right here in the last 45 minutes, I've caught three fish, so I'm not going to leave ship now. Mark Davis has just hooked the fish. Boy, this may be the fish that Mark needs. Pretty good fish. Got him on the big crankbait. He's playing him all the way to the back of the boat. Pretty good fish. Mark needs this one. Oh, man, the fish is just going everywhere. He hooked good, though. He looks like he has both trebles in him. I think Mark's got him. Boy, it's coming down to just ounces between Mark Davis, Mark Harden, and Mickey Bruce. This, this could be the key fish of the Bassmasters Classic. Stay tuned. The exciting conclusion to the 25th Annual Bassmasters Classic World Championship is coming up.
if you're going to win one like people say, you, you might as well win the first one. And it's really been something to to forward my career in bass fishing all my life. I, I clip coupons on it still today. You know, my friends at Kelly Tires wonder why sports cars have all the fun. So Kelly created a genuine performance tire with truck tire strength for pickup and four before. The new Safari HPR. And this is a good deal on one great looking tire. And they drive as good as they look. So get rolling on Kelly Safari HPR. Oh, no. Fish again. <laughs> Here, want to roll the wind up? <laughs> Bomber's new pet-free shad, Mark Davis classic winning lure, is the finest deep diver ever. And it's a member of the new family of artificials called the Excalibur series. Featuring Zell Rowland's Super Pop R, Mark Soson's Excalibur Mena, and Jimmy Houston's Rattling Super Spook. The Excalibur series is definitely world class. And my new Super Spook, it's incredible. A world class series with a world classic winner that I'm proud to have my name on, the Bomber Excalibur pet-free shad. Whether you're the first to win a Bassmaster Classic Championship or the last, winning the World Championship of Bass Fishing takes a lot of hard work and dedication. But without bass and the fishing know-how found in Bassmaster, I wouldn't have made a splash on the tournament trail. And Bassmaster is still putting champs in the winner's circle. I'm proud to say, even though I no longer fish the Bassmaster tournament trail, Bassmaster continues to help me fine-tune my fishing skills. Bassmaster has all the latest tips, tactics, and techniques any angler needs for fishing success. So if you want to join the ranks of the world's greatest anglers and catch more bass, join the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. To join, call 1-800-BASS-549. If you call now, you'll receive with your paid $20 membership 10 issues of Bassmaster, plus a Mark Davis autograph flat A, Berkeley's new Fireline, Berkeley's tournament strength power baits, and 162 pages of fishing how-to in bass baits. To join Bass and get your free tackle pack, call 1-800-BASS-549. Bit Chinam, guys. Showtime is only moments away. Inside the Greensboro Coliseum, a full house. Over 23,000 fishing fans count down the final weigh-in. The crowning of the 25th Annual Bassmasters Classic World Champion. Thank you very much. Classic week. It's been busy and pressure-packed for the 40 qualifiers. Besides the fishing, there's press and photo day. A chance for BASS members and fans to meet the classic contenders. A special kids classic at a local lake is held the same day, as is the Bassmaster Casting Kids Clinic, presented by Zebco and Rubbermaid and the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. A little more wrist action, okay? Over 100,000 fans tour the classic outdoor show that introduces to the public for the first time the newest in fishing tackle, boats and motors, and outdoor gear. But it's the award-winning Bassmasters Classic pre-weigh-in show that packs them into the stands. A 25th anniversary special, a salute to the champions, complete with indoor fireworks, dazzling lasers, the big screen TVs, and in person, country music star Lee Greenwood. God bless the USA. God bless the USA. And of course, classic waymaster Ray Scott, the founder of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society who in 1967 had a dream to make bass fishing a recognized sport. Congratulations, Ray. Bass anglers have made it. This is Bass Fishing's Super Day. Guido Hibbert, the 1988 Classic Champion, thrills him with this final round's biggest fish, worth a $1,000 bonus. But consistency, five bass limits, is the name of the game. Kevin Van Dam, the 1992 Angler of the Year, is on a roll again. Kevin, in second place yesterday, was only a half pound behind the leader, Mark Harden. All right, there's two. 
Oh, gosh. Mm, Kevin, I tell you what, I knew you had fish. They told us when you were coming in, but we didn't know how many. Well, Ray, it's, uh, you know, it was one of those days. I think they, they quit pulling water, and I just didn't get any bites. Folks, here he's come, a guy you'll recognize. That's head for Mr. David Fritz, Lexington, North Carolina. Come on, David. Two more, baby. Come on, David. Oh. Give me one more. That puts him in the lead, people, clearly. Give me one more, David. Fish of deep water again? Yeah, actually, I caught those shallow. I had to change up at 12:30. I only had one fish, so I went up a little shallower and caught those just so I'd have some way in. He needs 7:11 to take the lead, and he did that with eight pounds, eight ounces. Market folks, let's have him a good congratulations. Thank you. How about you? How about it, 18? All right. Now here we go. Bingo, Nikki Bruce. Oh! All right. You need eight pounds and 15 to take the lead in the classic. 14 pounds and one ounce, beat team. 18. Good job. Thank you. That's a, that's a good day on the rock is what that is. Come on, Mike. One. Hey, yo, Pico. That's a killer right there, dude. That bass is over four pounds. That will put him right up here in the bunk. You were great last year in the classic, and here you are again. Oh, I tell you what, Ray, uh, the excitement of the classic, it's, it's you know, you, can't, you just can't stand it. Five bass alive and folks, the biggest string of the day. 14 pounds and 10 ounces for Mike Worm. Let's give him a nice hand, people. Now, the leader of our tournament last uh, yesterday, Mark Harden, rookie. Folks, this is going to go down to the wire. Someone said he has a good creel. At the moment, he's, he's fallen to 8 pounds and 14 ounces off the lead. Nearly 9 pounds. He's got to have to reclaim the lead. Two bass for the rookie, Mark Harden. Bingo, go. That's a third one. Folks, I believe, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, he's reclaimed the lead with those first three fish. To be very, very close. He's going back for the fourth bass. There you are. That may be the one I do. All right, that's got it. Four bass. Mark Harden, let's weigh these bass and don't waste any time. See if he reclaims the lead. He needs 814, and folks, He's taking the lead, 10 pounds, even. There at the moment is your champion, right here. Mark Hyden, don't leave. Right. This is the longest moment in the world, the sweat, they call it. We got one more man that can take the lead. Mark Davis of Mount Ida. Mark Davis was angler of the year this past year. He's a tremendous man, not just in body, but in spirit. Tremendous fella. And folks, he's the only man that can knock this man off right here. Mark's won this tournament, unless Mark Davis can come through. So let's have a nice welcome for the only man who can beat him, and that's Mr. Mark Davis, Angler of the Year this year. Here he comes. BT, let's stand up and give him a welcome. Only man. Countdown. He's 14 pounds and a half behind. No one, no angler has ever been Angler of the Year and won the Bassmaster Classic the same year, so that will be interesting if he can pull that off. He's got to have 14 and a half pounds to win this tournament. Mark Hart is standing by. That'll help right there. That bass is going to go three pounds. All right. That moves him up. Gives him about eight pounds. Let's go, Mark. All right, there was another. All right, one more time. Mark Davis, four bass. He's going for his spin. There he is, baby. That will do it. Folks, he's got to have 14 pounds and seven ounces to take the lead for Mark Harden. Friend, we don't want to waste any time. No, don't waste any time. I've been out there too long now. I feel like I got a big egg beater right in the middle of what Billy I got left. I don't think it'll be enough. Got to be 14-7. You made it! 16 pounds! It's a blessing just to be here. It's a great day. He gave me a, a tremendous blessing today. Let me hold a couple of them. 
Folks, those are the two bass that made him a millionaire. Mark Davis of Mount Ida, Arkansas, the world champion of professional bass fishing. The first angler in BASS history to capture both the Bassmaster's Classic Crown and the Angler of the Year in the same season. If there's one word that fits Mark's success, it's consistency. A resourceful angler who made on-the-spot adjustments each day of the 95 Classic. It wasn't luck. To win the most prized catch in bass fishing, it takes skill, not luck. We hope you've enjoyed this special presentation of The Bassmasters and will join us again when we return to TNN, the Nashville Network, on January 7th with an all-new Bassmaster Tournament Trail season. The 25th Annual Bassmasters Classic World Championship has been brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. AC Delco Parts, it's like buying time. Wrangler Rugged Wheel, geared for the outdoors. Kelly Tires, where you get a good deal on a great tire. Parts Plus, America's family of auto parts stores. Motor Guide, the world's most powerful trolling motor. Zebco Quantum, the top names in fishing. Jerseys, American Active Wear. Berkeley tri -Lean. America's number one selling fishing rod because it's super strong. Bomber Bait Company, world-class fishing rules, a Predco brand. Daiichi, the world's sharpest hooks. Storm Lures, quality lures for taking the big ones by storm. Team Dial, designed by the winningest pros on the tournament trail. And the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, the world's largest bass fishing organization.